The Holy Gospel according to John, the 11th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. I invite you to be seated as we have another long gospel reading today. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let's go to Judea again. His disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you. And are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. And after saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he'll be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. And then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us go also so that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him while Mary stayed at home. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And when she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. And the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. And when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit. And he was deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind men have kept this man from dying? And then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed and would, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him, let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. So this past Thursday, I made a round trip. Uh, to Houston and back. I was taking two little Yorkie 12-year-old brother and sister dogs to my sister for their forever home. A a member of our congregation was no longer able to keep them because of a new illness that they're dealing with. And uh, so we fostered them for about the past 10 days. And um, so I was giving them to my sister. Hi, Valerie. Hi, Susie. Um, And uh, 
when I got home, our whole family just started to decompress. We loved having the dogs with us, but we already have two dogs. And that means there's four dogs and four people in a house, and they're in a new environment, and they didn't sleep all the night long, and neither did we. And uh, so it was, a, it was kind of, we got a little bit, you know, anxious, and, and all of a sudden they're not there, and you could just feel everybody in the house just slowly just kind of melt down a little bit. And, and we all went to bed early that night. And in the middle of the night, I, I wake up and I hear some water running. I'm thinking, oh, the kids are using the bathroom or something. And then I wake up again and I hear the water running and I just dismiss it. And then 5 o'clock, the alarm goes off because uh, Becca's got to go to work. And it's my day off, so I'm just going to turn back over. And that's when I hear, oh, my goodness, Steve. And then I jump out of bed and I run into the bathroom and I'm standing in water. And, our, our, and I'm looking at Becca, who's underneath the sink, turning off the hot water valve. Because the supply line from the hot water to the sink had busted and it was spewing water all night long. And it was all in our bathroom. And so we're cleaning it up with towels, and the kids got up, and they're in there watching us. And so there we all are in our pajamas cleaning up water at 5 o'clock in the morning. And we need more towels, so uh, we're going downstairs, and that's when Becky goes, oh my goodness, look at, oh no! And I walk downstairs, and part of our kitchen ceiling is collapsed. Yes. Yes, and we're walking in water, and the dogs are standing in the water, and they're splashing around, they're drinking the water, and we're like, what do we do? What do we do? And I, luckily, was a part of this congregation whenever the church flooded, so I remembered Abiding Presence has a wet-dry vac. I'll be right back. And so I leave, and as I'm driving to come up to the church, thank you, by the way, Abiding Presence, for letting me use your wet-dry vac. I didn't ask permission at 5 o'clock in the morning, but uh, 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 as, as I was driving up here, I remember that my spiritual advisor talked about when things are too big, we've got to turn them over to God because we don't know what to do with them. And so I'm praying the prayer that I've told many people here before, God, this is too big. It's yours. You take it. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to clean up sheetrock. I don't know what to do with that. And so I get up here, and I go into the closet, and I get out the, the wet dry vac, and I get this feat of inspiration, grab the, grab the fan, the industrial fan that we have that we use to dry out the carpet here, get the, get the brooms, get the squeegee. And so I'm carting all this stuff back over to the house, and as I'm driving back, it's like, we got to take pictures, we need to call the insurance. And all of a sudden, these thoughts are just kind of coming into me like that, and I get home, and I'm like, let's call the insurance company, and when I walk in... The kids had already moved all the stuff out, you know, and the, 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 all of them had taken the table out. So there's just this area is open now, and they're starting to clean up, and they're just like cupping and throwing water out the back door. And, and I start to vacuum up the, the water with the, the wet dry vac, just going, okay, God, I don't know what's next, but, you know, we're, we're going to figure this out. And that's when I turn around, and my lovely wife is smiling at me. And I'm like, why, why are you smiling? And just grinning ear to ear, just like, hey. I was like, it's like, she's so happy about something. I'm like, what are you so happy about? And she shows me the phone, and she's like, we have water damage insurance. <laughs> <laughs> and we're kind of dancing in the water, and we're so excited. Because all of a sudden, it's like, oh, we don't have to pay for all this? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God, we got to do the deductible. That's fine, whatever. And so then they all go to work, and I'm calling the insurance agency while I'm vacuuming up stuff. They say, get a plumber. So I call a plumber. 30 minutes later, this guy is in my house fixing the problem. The water's back on. No sooner that he leaves, the reclamation team comes in, and they're starting to tear down my walls. It's just happening so fast, and I'm doing nothing during the middle of all this, just letting it happen, letting go and letting God just take it because I can't do any of it. Now, I, I share this story with you because I was planning on preaching something else about Ezekiel and John, but after this experience... Um, I'm having a hard time stepping away from, from what Scripture is talking to me this morning. So, Ezekiel is a prophet, and he's at the time of the exile. Now, this is whenever the Israelites have been kicked out of their home. They've been displaced. They no longer have a home to go back to. They're now living in a different country, learning different languages, and they are wondering where God is. God saved them from slavery. What, where's God now? And so it's during this time that God is speaking to Ezekiel, and he shows, shares this vision with him. And in this vision, Ezekiel is standing in this valley, and he's surrounded by these bones, these dry, rotting bones. Almost like, I, I just imagine like it's a post-apocalyptic, you know, movie poster or something, you know? And, and, and he's in the middle of this whole area, and God starts speaking to Ezekiel. Do you think these bones can live? And that's when Ezekiel says, only you know, Lord, this is yours. 
And he's turning it over to God, and God says, speak to the bones. Speak to, the, speak to them and watch them come together. And so Ezekiel does, and he speaks to them, and all of a sudden, the bones start rattling. They start coming together, and flesh upon flesh, and sinew upon sinew, and, and bone upon bone. They all start coming together, and he's surrounded now by these lifeless forms that are surrounding him, and, and God says, give them the breath. Invite the four winds to come in. Speak breath to them. And so Ezekiel speaks, and all of a sudden the spirit enters into these, these, these uh, 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 people that are surrounding him, and now they're all alive. And that's when God says, this is my people. This is Israel. They think that their bones are all dried up, that they're in a grave, that they're entombed. I'm with them right now. Go tell them that I am with them, that I will restore them, that I will bring them back to Israel, that they will come home. This is not the end of their story. And so Ezekiel is to go and prophesy to these people. Now hang on to that one, because the Gospel of John is about the the resurrection of Lazarus. It's a great story, but we need to know kind of why we got to Lazarus. John, of course, was written... At the very end, it tells us it was written that you may believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and have life in his name. Even the beginning talks about in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, that Jesus is God, flesh among us. We are to call to believe in this Messiah and have life in his name. And the first 10 chapters of John is a pattern that occurs where Jesus goes and does a sign or appears someplace and does something and people either come to believe in him or move further away from him and get more from misunderstanding to disgust to anger to want to kill him. So there's these two different variables that are happening, and it happens all throughout the first 10 chapters. It starts at the wedding of Cana. It goes to Nicodemus. It goes to the Samaritan woman at the well. Those are the past three weeks of Scripture that we've had. But it also happens at all of the different festivals and even in the temple. All these things keep happening to the point that now there's a following of people that really believe that Jesus is the Messiah, but there's also a whole other contingency of people that are out to get him. What do you do? You can't say this stuff. And especially the Pharisees are saying, it's now it's time to kill this man. And they're starting to to get ready to to do that. And they say, if you come back to Jerusalem, you're going down. And so Jesus and his his comrades, they just, they leave. And now we're at the story of Lazarus. And that's whenever he hears that Lazarus is sick. And he knows if he goes back to Jerusalem, he's going to die. They even say, if you go back, they're going to kill you, Jesus. But he loves Lazarus. That's our God. That's how God works, willing to go to death because he loves each and every one of us, willing to die for us. And there he is, knowing he's going to death, he's going to return because he loves Lazarus, his beloved. And so he returns, and as he goes back, Martha sees him, and he's like, if you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. And Jesus says, he's going to rise. And Martha's like, I know he's going to rise on the last day. And he goes, no, 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 no. I'm the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? Do you believe? And Martha's like, yes, I believe. And then he sees Mary, and Mary comes in and says the same thing. If you would have been here, our brother wouldn't have died. And he watches as she's weeping, and he watches as the crowd that's gathered with her, they're all crying, and they're weeping, and they're wailing, because Lazarus is dead. And so he goes, let's go to the tomb. Remove the stone. And Martha comes up and says, you don't want to do that. It's stinky in there. It's been four days. You don't want to take to open that, Jesus. And he looks at them and says, do you not believe that I'm the resurrection and the life? And that's when he shouts out to God, use me to show them that you're powerful. Use me to show them that you're doing this, God. And he says, Lazarus, come out. And the man appears, unbind him, and he's wrapped up. And they go and they start to free him from from his cloth. If God has the ability to raise a man from the dead four days later, and if the same God has the ability to raise a multitude of people from dry bones, surely God can take care of my kitchen. (laughs) If I get out of the way, if I listen to what God's asking of me, instead of just trying to do it myself, because left to my own devices, I would not have had that insurance. (laughs) I would have saved a buck. Uh, I don't know where you're at today. 
I don't know what issue you've got going on, what calamity you're wrestling with, what person you may have a resentment against, what drama is going on in your life. I don't know where you're at. But I do know that today is a very clear message. Am I trying to solve it myself? Or am I going to let God have this too? Because if God has the ability to raise a man from the dead and raise a whole multitude of people from dry bones, I think God can handle my frustration and traffic. I think God can handle this person that I'm just having a hard time with or this person that I will never, ever forgive. Maybe you don't have to forgive them, but maybe you could hand them over to God and let God have them so they're no longer renting any space in your head. And then maybe God's going to speak to you about going and helping somebody else. I don't know where you're at, but I do know that each and every one of us have those things that bind us up, that entomb us, that keep us in that grave. And today we're being told, let it go and let God have it because God unbinds us. God frees us from the grave. God restores us and gives us new life. This is a resurrection God. So let go and let God have whatever it is that you're holding on to. Amen.